make some people laugh and tell them about Jesus. for coming out. It means so much to me, and we've been working on this forever, and uh, working on the production and the promotion, and uh, I kind of forgot to write jokes, so I was backstage going, ah. But, man, I appreciate you guys coming out. It's, it's just, a, it means, seriously, it means a lot to me that you guys uh, enjoy clean comedy and stuff. If you don't know a lot about me, uh, I am a comedian, and uh, I wasn't actually a comedian uh, forever. I was actually a stay-at-home dad for a while, but then we uh, had kids, and uh, <laughs> had to get out of there. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, I'm married, I've been married for uh, 10 years, and uh, we have three kids now, because uh, we're uh, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> and it's not that I don't love my kids, I do, I love them uh, to death, I love Coulter and uh, the other two. Um, <laughs> it's just that um, I'm a father of three kids, there's a lot of responsibility, and so there's things I'm not good at that I'm supposed to be, like, you know, the father has all these, you know, rules and things that they, like a protector of the family is a good example. I'm the protector of my family, me. <laughs> <laughs> I am the worst protector in the world. First of all, I've got the wrong body, I'm ready to admit that, okay? Um, second of all, I got the wrong voice to be a protector, okay? I'm not scaring anybody. If you were a burglar breaking in downstairs, would this scare you? You better not be down there. <laughs> what? what is that? I'm like the only guy that can stand at the top of the stairs and go, you better get out or I'll call my husband, you know. <laughs> First time I realized my voice was high was my senior year in high school. We were putting on a haunted house and I didn't even know what to do and they were like, Smiley, stand behind the front door, just jump out and scare them, they won't be ready. And so I was hiding behind the front door and the first group came by and I just jumped out and went, boo. <laughs> Nothing. One five-year-old kid said, are you Glinda the Good Witch? And uh, it was embarrassing. It was the uh, last time I ever wore that dress. Um, <laughs> didn't mean to share that. <laughs> what else can I tell you? Three boys. We have all boys, which is what I wanted. Um, when my wife and I got married, my wife wanted um, a lot of kids. She wanted a colony. She wanted like a tribe of kids. And I, I talked her down to three, but then I wanted all boys and she wanted a girl. And so we agreed that we wouldn't pray for a gender. We'd leave it up to God. And we did that. But uh, I don't know if you guys do this, but do you ever pray for God's will? But during the prayer, you kind of tell God what his will should be? Do you ever <laughs> kind of sneak it in? My wife was great until the third one. And then she started to panic because she wanted a girl and she was just sneaking it in. She was like, God, we just want a healthy, happy baby that's coordinated enough to put on makeup and nail polish. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I know prayer works, so I had to get in the game because I wanted a boy, so I had to counter it. I was like, yeah, God, that's what we want, a healthy, happy baby that goes to the bathroom standing up. <laughs> <laughs> but then I was like, wait a minute, what are we doing? Now God's going to give us some weird baby, you know, <laughs> I know. Somebody puts on makeup and nail polish but goes to the bathroom standing up? Yeah. I was afraid they were going to go, Mr. and Mrs. Smiley, here's your son, Michael Jackson. So, so, so yeah, so three boys uh, uh, and an awesome wife, very good, awesome Christian wife. I uh, um, Also, and, it, and it's cool because... You know, another great thing about being a Christian is that uh, not only can you, you know, rely on God to help you, but you also can rely on your church. And uh, so, we, you know, it's great to have that three kids and have a church that helps you. And, um, and, and we all kind of do that. In fact, all of my friends are having babies like crazy. It's almost like I go to church with like baby Pez dispensers. It's like... <laughs> every week. In fact... Um, yeah, I wasn't going to tell this, but I think I'll tell this now because um, a friend of ours had a baby uh, actually a couple months ago, and my, we lived down the street from the hospital, and my wife bought this talking Elmo doll and asked me to walk it down to the hospital, and at first I was like, no, because it wasn't wrapped, and I'm not going to walk down the street with a talking Elmo doll because I'm an adult, and you know, I'd look silly, but then my wife was like, well, why don't you put it in your Batman backpack? So I did that. <laughs> 
I did that and I got on the elevator um, to the hospital and I was by myself for a little bit. So if you're a guy, you know what I was doing. But if you're a girl, I'm just going to tell you, when guys get on the elevator, I don't know what it is. It's in our DNA that we all turn into idiot morons as soon as that door. <laughs> Something about being by ourselves, as soon as that door closes, it's like, <clears throat> we're like, la, 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 la. I am the king of this tiny village. <laughs> Bow down to me, one-eyed button people. <laughs> And I love that women don't know that we do that, because that means we must at least cover it really well. We're probably like, la, 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 how you doing, you know, right? <laughs> so I was dancing around, and, um, or <laughs> I wasn't dancing around. Uh, I don't know how conservative this church is. Is, uh, <laughs> is that okay? I was, do, we can do that? Oh, this is off the subject. I should tell you guys up front, if you haven't seen me before, I do jump around a lot during my stand-up, because I've got the... Um, it's not ADD, it's something else. Um, I don't know what it is, <laughs> whatever it is. I don't know, I know I saw a doctor about it and he told me, but you know, I was like, yeah, get on with it, I got stuff to do. So I didn't, <laughs> I don't know what it is. It does mean you're a bad father. I'll give you a quick story. Uh, last summer, I went out to the garage to get some uh, tools off my wife's workbench. And uh, <clears throat> I use tools and my four-year-old followed me out, and I always forget I'm the adult. And so I just, I was like messing around, and I needed more light. So I hit the garage door, forgetting I'm the adult, and I should look to see where my kid is first. And I looked back like 30 seconds later. Well, he evidently had grabbed the garage door, rode it up, and was now hanging from the top of the hill. I know. So I panicked, and I ran over, and I grabbed him. And this kid's going to be a genius, because he just looked at me, and he goes, no tell mama? And I was like, yeah, no tell mama. <laughs> So I jump around a lot. But anyway, so I just thought, I don't know what made me think of this, but I, I flew United uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, first of all, if you ever fly, don't fly United for many reasons. One, their planes are old. And you can totally tell. Like when you get on, they smell like your grandmother's closet. You know that smell? Where you're like, Nana? You know, right? <clears throat> The other reason is they have, uh, these flight attendants are always rude. I don't know what it is, but I got on this, fl uh, this flight and I, I grabbed a pillow out of first class. And when I went through, there was like this three foot male flight attendant who was like fresh out of the Shire standing there. <laughs> and he just grabbed the pillow out of my hand and he was like, these are for first class passengers. You're in coach, you know. And I was going to argue, but he had already put the ring on and disappeared. So... <laughs> And also, I'm sure this won't happen to you, but it, when I fly United, I always get put in the worst seat in the, in the plane. Usually it's the middle seat between the two biggest guys on the plane that are usually like fresh back from the steroid convention thing. The, what's the steroid thing? Uh, Major League Baseball All-Star Game. So, well, sorry. <laughs> I'm not good at sports because I'm afraid of needles. So... <laughs> So I was, I was getting on this plane. I don't know what made me think of this, but oh, I know what made me think about it. I went to the library to get a book the night before I got on this plane because it was a long flight, but I got kicked out of the library before I could get a book because the, where I live, the library has this weird rule that you can't uh, scream out loud in the middle of the library, which I'm sorry, but if, that's kind of hypocritical. If you can't yell in the middle of the library, then don't put pop-up books in the library. <laughs> I was just minding my own business. I was like, oh, Daniel in the lion's den. <laughs> ah! <clears throat> so anyway, so I, I got on the, the plane and I, and I sat down and I was going to fall asleep because I didn't have a book. And um, what I did was I, I started to fall asleep, but then the little flight attendant dude uh, started making his announcements. He's like, can everybody's attention, please? We represent the lollipop girl, the lollipop. No, he didn't do that. <laughs> But at one point later, I, I, he came down because I hit my call button. It was kind of funny because he was all mad because of the whole pillow thing. And he was like, you're causing trouble. I'm not even supposed to be up now. And I wanted to say, not supposed to be up? You're not even supposed to be out of that chocolate factory, man. Right? <laughs> I didn't say that because I'm a Christian. So, <clears throat> But I was going to fall asleep, but he, he started making his announcements, which I don't know if you guys fly a lot, but the two announcements that kind of just seem weird to me is one, they say in the event of a water crash landing, you can use your seat cushion as a flotation device. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but if I'm ever in a crash, the seat cushion I was just sitting on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I don't want that thing anywhere near me. So <laughs> what was the other one? There was another one. Oh, I know what it was. They say in, um, like when the oxygen mask falls down, I thought oxygen started flowing. But I, just a couple weeks ago, I was listening to it, and they said you have to tug lightly on the tube to start the flow of oxygen. Well, that's dangerous. We've got to rethink that, because who's going to be able to go 10,000 miles an hour into a mountain going, ah! Hee <laughs> hee! We're yanking that thing out of the ceiling, man. So anyway, so I sat down. I don't know why I told you guys this. I didn't mean to put this in, but... Oh, I was going to fall asleep. This is actually a good point. I think if you stay positive, God will bless you. And I was wanting a book, and whenever the guy made his announcements, I kind of woke back up and I looked, and somebody left a book in the, the seat back. And it was an animal book, and so I thought it was cool because I was finding out how creative God is because it had stuff like snakes smell with their tongue. And I didn't know that, you know, because I, I went to public school, so I didn't know anything. <clears throat> but I didn't. And Come on, that's creative. Snakes smell with their tongue. And I immediately praise God that we didn't have that because how awkward would that be, you know? <laughs> You know, at church, going, hey, come here. <laughs> Love your new perfume. You know, <laughs> flies smell with their feet? That's true. Flies smell with their feet. I'm glad we didn't get that because I grew up on a farm, right? And I'd be like, oh. <laughs> Bees. This is the most amazing thing. I don't know how anybody can deny how powerful and creative God is. Bees, they find pollen, they go back to the hive, they can't speak. What they do is do a little dance in front of other bees, and then they automatically, the other bees know where pollen is. That is amazing. I mean, the bees get back to the hive, and you know, like, na 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 <laughs> And the other bees are like, oh, the pollen's at a country western bar. So, <clears throat> so dancing. That's what made me think of that, dancing. So anyway, so I'm dancing around on the elevator. And <clears throat> right? <laughs> that means the medication's working. So <clears throat> I'm dancing around. The door opens up. All of a sudden, 18 people come crowding through the elevator. And the first guy through is ginormous. He's like six foot by six foot, okay? He's like, he's like Spongebob Blockhead is what he is. He's huge. And I don't know this for a fact, but I'm guessing he had just come from a workout facility where he'd just run 18 miles on a treadmill while wearing a wool suit. Yeah. While evidently eating an onion because uh, he reeked. And it was a tiny little elevator. At one point, I was like, would someone slap me in the face with a dead skunk, please? I just want to smell something sweet. <laughs> And the worst part was there were 17, there were 17 other people, so he crowded into me. I'm only 5'11 and a half, and he was huge. So at this point, I'm like a human roll-on deodorant to this guy. <laughs> so I did what I think everybody would have done, every adult. I backed up against the wall to get away from him, forgetting I had a talking Elmo doll in my Batman backpack. <laughs> Guys, it was dead quiet on the elevator, and all of a sudden you hear... Elmo loves you. <laughs> 18 heads go like that. <laughs> and not to get too preachy, but I love moments like that because I'm a Christian. And when you're a Christian, you don't worry about what other people think. All you care about is what your Savior Jesus Christ thinks about you. So it sets you free to not be embarrassed about stuff like that. Because a normal adult would be like, oh, I got a talking Elmo doll in my Batman backpack. That's what a normal adult would say, right? <clears throat> not me. They're all staring at me. I actually leaned up against the wall, made him say it again, only this time, I mouthed along. <laughs> <laughs> They're all staring at me, and I was just like, Elmo loves you. <laughs> And then I thought, I think God blessed me with this because now I can use this to get Captain Sweaty Pit here off me because most people had moved away, but he was still like all in my Kool-Aid, right? So, so I lean up against the wall and I, I thought, I'm going to make Elmo say his name and then I'm going to stop it and then I'm going to use my own voice. It'll be more dramatic. So I leaned up and I was like, Elmo loves you. <laughs> it was awesome. I know this had to have been a blessing from God because the door opened up right then and 18 people took off running off the elevator. I was like, ha, 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 ha. 
la 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 so so You guys are awesome, man. I'm so proud of you guys for coming out, man. This is going to be so cool. But anyway, so all that to say is, um, yeah, I'm married and I have three kids is what I wanted to tell you. And <laughs> it's weird. Somebody asked me out in the lobby earlier, like, what is it like to have three kids? Because they had had one. And I was like, the best thing I can describe, it's like, it's like owning a motorcycle because uh, your insurance rates skyrocket, your hair's always messed up, and at some point during the journey, you're going to eat a bug, Okay. <laughs> I know, and, and like nobody prepares you for some stuff. Like I'll give you this: three kids, they sneak up on me all the time. It's like living with ghosts in our house. Like I can't tell you how many times I thought I was by myself, and I'm just like, golly! <laughs> when did you? I thought I was in this stall all by myself. Right? I'm like, and especially at night. Anybody have like a kid sneak up on you in the middle of the night? Yeah, some of you guys. Like I wasn't prepared for that. And a couple of weeks ago, I'm laying in bed. I don't even know why. I opened up my eyes. I looked over. My four-year-old, boom, right there. <laughs> Scared me to death because he's normally a cute kid. But <laughs> it's the middle of the night, plus in the glow of my Barney nightlight, his eyes are all hollow. <laughs> and he's not talking. He's just standing there, you know. <laughs> right? You expect at any moment he's just going to go... <laughs> he didn't. He just stood there kind of looking cute, just, you know, holding the kitchen knife. But <laughs> they're weird. And we had our third one uh, this year, uh, Xander. Uh, it was our third one. We have Coulter, Trent, and uh, Xander. And uh, <laughs> yeah, Xander. <laughs> is that, that is kind of a weird name, I guess. And we actually fought over it because, uh, first of all, um, I didn't know that you could name your kids as many names as, as you want. There's no stipulation. I thought you could only name it like first, middle, and last, except in the South where, you know, they give you a couple extras, you know, to tag on there, you know, like, sorry about the Civil War, <laughs> you know, your kid can be Billy Bob, Joe, Jim, Bob, you know, <laughs> instead of Tiffany. So <laughs> I didn't know that. I wish I would have known that because I would have named my kid, you know, Xander, Xavier, Cross, Blake, Memphis, Boyle, Smiley, the third, you know, right? <laughs> I would have done it just to see the guy fill out the birth certificate, you know, right? Here's your kid, here's the birth certificate, right? So, but we fought over the name. I don't know if husbands and wives do that a lot, but with the third one, you know, I was like, let's, let's give him a cool sounding name. And I know it's kind of childish, but I thought it'd be fun to name a kid, you know, right? I just thought it'd be fun to call him, you know, and if you call him right, then you could get other people to call him too. So, we, right? You know. What a good self-esteem builder. Everybody loves me. <laughs> They're all calling my name. So we're, but then she was like, no, that's just childish. And I was like, okay, well, let's name him. And then I, I heard the boy named Sue song. I was like, let's name him something to make him strong and tough. Let's name him, uh, hit myself in the head with a wolf ball bat during recess. Let's name him that. And my wife was like, you're just mean. Let's name him Xander. And I was like, <laughs> same results, you know, right? So... <laughs> So sorry, I just I saw you guys like Xander. So anyway, so we have our third kid uh, is Xander. We actually had a scare uh, with our third one, and uh, and I'll share it right now. But uh, I live uh, I live you know north of Houston, and I live in a weird part of town because there's like a it's it got a weird strip mall where I hang out a lot of times. Because on one end of the strip mall they have a uh, it's a drive-through tobacco barn. Which, for the life of me, I don't even know what that is or what happens there. I guess rednecks pull up and they're like, yeah, fill her up, please. <laughs> you know what? Go ahead and top her off. I got a long drive. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even get it. But they have that, and then, and this is why it's a weird dichotomy of a strip mall. They have that, then they have a Starbucks, and then they have this real fancy restaurant, like Lay Snob or, you know, something like that, where, <laughs> I'm not even kidding you, like, it's a fancy restaurant, like, the uh, dinners, like, some of the plates are, like, $15, and, uh, <laughs> ridiculous, right? They have a lobster tank. This is off the subject, but I'd never been to a place that had a lobster tank, and uh, I just, I felt kind of bad. I'm not against eating meat. In fact, uh, I'm very pro eating meat. I think it's good for you, and, uh, and I, I dated a vegetarian in college, which uh, she kind of, you know, she was one of those psycho vegetarians, and I'm not against vegetarians. Um, like, I don't know if there's anybody, in fact, this would be interesting. If you're a vegetarian, if you're strong enough, try to raise your hand. I want to see, anybody, <laughs> anybody in here? I'm not against them. I'm just saying... <laughs> 
the girl I dated was psycho. She was like, you shouldn't eat red meat. And I was like, I don't. I eat brown meat. <laughs> but they have a lobster tank. And I just thought that was so weird to have a lobster tank. I'm just against tricking lobsters. I don't mind eating them. I don't think we should put them in a big swimming pool and have everybody in the room have a bib with their picture on it because, you know, they, they got to think it's their birthday, okay? <laughs> And then you stand over him and you point to him so you know he's going, yeah, it's me. And they pick him up and take him over to a boiling pot. And, but even then, they're like, a oh, hot tub? This is the coolest party. <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not good with mine. I just think it's weird because you don't go into KFC and there's a little chicken pin over there. And you're like, yeah, I'll take this one right here. <laughs> Off with his head. <laughs> you know, you know. Go into a steak shop and be like, yeah, I'll have the, uh, I'm going to have surf and turf tonight. I'll have the cow with the little blue bell and the uh, lobster with the little birthday hat on there. You don't do that. So anyway, weird dichotomy, right? And my wife is nine months pregnant and I'm hanging out at Starbucks because I love coffee. We got coffee fans? I love it. I drink it all the time. I love coffee. In fact, I, I drink it really almost too much. In fact, one time I got on the um, freeway because I was out of coffee and I was passing everybody because I wanted to go to the store and get more coffee and everybody was kind of staring at me and it kind of made me mad. So finally I was like, what? And then I realized I'd forgotten my car. But <laughs> So I'm in Starbucks and I'm about to order. I'm, there's one person in front of me and I'm standing there. But anytime I have a, 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 just a break, I'm always praying to my Savior. And I, and I just, I love to use those, those little breaks in the, in the day just to talk to my best friend and I'm praying. But I'm, I'm mainly praying about my wife who could go into labor at any time. And all of a sudden through the door walks this guy. And um, he is, he's big. He's really big. And um, he's goth. But he's Texas goth, so, um, you know, for people watching the DVD, it's totally different. Uh, Texas goth, they still have the face piercings, but it's like fishing lures they've hung, like, in their face. And... <laughs> right? You know what I'm talking about. We're Texans, man. They're like, ah, I'm goth. <laughs> How do you know? Look at my black bib overalls. Come on. You know, right? <laughs> you just can't be goth with a southern accent. You know, ah. <laughs> Hey, y'all, how you doing? <laughs> so he comes in, and he wasn't wearing overalls. He was actually wearing uh, uh, baggy pants, which, uh, by the way, I love that baggy pants are still popular. I know it kind of went for this phase, and some parents don't like it, but let me make you a fan of baggy pants. I got a friend that's a police officer, and he can now catch gang members so much quicker now because they wear, <laughs> because they, they, they keep the belt here. They can't even run from the cops. They're like, oh, it's the cops. Hurry, waddle. <laughs> I'm surprised they don't just hide in their pants. Oh, it's the cops! <laughs> so he's huge. This is going to shock you. First of all, you need to know this up front. I am not as muscular as I look, okay? I promise you. <laughs> Second of all, my mouth used to get me in trouble a lot, and I used to get in a lot of fights, and um, even from early on. Like, I was probably, one of the worst fights I ever had was in second grade, because my mouth, and yeah, it wasn't even funny, though. I was, like, I lost really badly, and uh, in my defense, she was huge, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying, but this guy came in, and, and, and I can't fight. I actually used to get in so many fights, I tried to learn how to fight, but uh, I started on my dad's speed bag. But, you know, the little speed bag in the garage. And then I was like, this is useless, because the only way this is going to help me fight is if the guy I'm fighting is somehow hoisted upside down. And I think, you want, you want a piece of me? Let's go. I just need you to step in that little loopy thing there, and I'll just pull you. <laughs> this is off the subject, but I also, the last time I tried to learn how to fight, I took karate. I lasted one day. Because first of all, I look really silly in pajamas. And <laughs> second of all, you got to be barefooted. And I had the most ticklish feet in the world. <laughs> This is why I knew karate wasn't for me. I actually went to kick somebody and I went, hi-ya! <laughs> it's like, I'm going to get more fights this way. So. so he walked in and then he just looked weird and he was kind of looking around and everything and I was like, and he cut right in front of me. And it was my turn to order and I was about to step up and he cut in front of me. And so I, I wasn't going to say anything because I didn't want to get in a fight. But I was sitting there thinking, I can't believe we live in a society where somebody, just because he's bigger than me, can cut in front of me. And as I was thinking of that, he walked up to the lady and he ordered. He goes, I'll have a double non-fat latte and I don't like foam, so there better not be foam. Do you understand me? And I was like, <laughs> 
Because believe me, I am all about how creative God is. And I know he's made us all different. And I think it's fascinating. But I was not expecting that voice to come out of that body. So I was laughing. And the uh, problem was, I was laughing out loud. <laughs> He turned around and uh, his shadow, it looked like an eclipse moving over the place. He stood over me, pointed a baseball bat down into my face, or actually I thought it was a baseball bat at the time. It turned out it was just his finger. But he pointed at me, he goes, what are you laughing at? And I don't know if you guys have ever been in a situation where you're about to get in a fight, but I said the only thing I thought would get me out of it. I was like, I didn't know anyone else ordered my same drink. (laughs) Hee hee! I skipped into the bathroom and I was hiding the stall. This is where the scare came in, by the way. My wife was at home and our water pipe busted and flooded our house. So my wife called Starbucks. She was like, hey, Eddie, is Bob still there? And he was like, yeah, he's hiding in the bathroom. She's like, okay, what? (laughs) Doesn't matter. Tell him the water broke. He's got to come home now. So, (laughs) yeah. So I am hanging out in the stall. Eddie opens up the door as a friend of mine, and he's like, man, you got to go home. Your wife's water just broke. Guys, I was so excited. I jumped in the car. I was singing praises to God. I was going to go get my beautiful bride, and we were going to go to the hospital and have our third uh, tax deduction. And uh, I was so excited, and I knew my wife's water broke, and I was like really into it. And then all of a sudden, I opened up the door, and my wife was standing in the middle of the living room. There was two foot of water in the living room. I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, are you giving birth to Aquaman? (laughs) She goes, no, but I'm married idiot man. (laughs) And just, I'm amazed at like how I try to keep up as a father. And I know that's why God makes us um, love our kids so much is because you got to have it because things happen. Like things have happened to me. I'll I'll share this in a... Again, I hope this doesn't offend anybody, but if you're a parent, you know. Uh, One time I was changing uh, Xander's diaper, and uh, evidently, he wasn't done. And uh, (laughs) it had never happened before. And I was actually standing over him like a father does, and going, you're such a cute little baby. (laughs) Yes, you are. What are you going to be when you grow up, little man? Oh, my eye, my eye, oh, oh! You're going to be a sniper. You're going to be a... sniper in the army. My wife was like, he could be a fireman. (laughs) He could be a fire hydrant is what he could be. (laughs) And I do. And then weird stuff happens like that all the time. One time I was, I was mowing the lawn and there was a snake in our backyard and I'm afraid of snakes, but it's amazing how just being a father, you want to protect your kids. And so I, I shut the mower off and it was over by the corner and I grabbed a shovel and I snuck up on it. And I I was so scared, guys, but I knew I had to protect my kids. And I took the shovel and I just went like that. And I cut the snake in two. And for a moment, I felt cool. I felt like I'd protected my family. It was a great feeling. Uh, It didn't last long because my wife opened up the door and was like, honey, our cable just went out. And I can't tell you how many times stuff like that happens. It's just the craziest thing. You know, when, this actually happened a couple years ago, but I haven't ever really talked about it. But uh, I went into my, uh, my office slash merch room slash kitchen slash den because uh, it's a lot of money in Christian comedy. And um, I had my laptop up and a mouse, my mouse in there. And I walked in and Coulter, he was, he was a lot younger then, but he had unplugged the mouse and put the electrical in in his mouth. And I was like, oh, you can't do that. That's electrical. You can't. And I thought, oh, I'm supposed to teach him. So I grabbed it and I was like, Coulter, listen to me. You can't put an electrical cord in your wet mouth because that's dangerous, okay? And then I've just plugged it right back in. I know. I was like, you learn from me. <laughs> Let that be a lesson, right? I mean, and, and, we, and that's another cool thing, not to keep harping on it, but I love being a Christian because it keeps you from doing, like, worse stuff, you know, because you don't ever want to cuss in front of your kids. And, you know, it's kind of nice just to not cuss at all, to not have to censor yourself. And, um, you know, I know a lot of people struggle with that. I, I, when I was a kid, I guess it's okay to share this, but I struggled with that a little bit. And then my grandmother actually set me free from it because she was like, hey, you know, you know what's wrong. And uh, so what you should do is you should use words from the Old Testament. So it sounds like you're cussing, but you're not. And uh, I know it sounds weird, but it totally worked. Like, first time I did it, I slammed my hand in the door. And I was like, ow, Shadrach, oh. oh. Son of Abednego, oh. Oh. (laughs) 
So kids, read your Bible. Uh, I, don't know my, I don't know my message is there, but it's just... That's why I think we all got to be uncaged. We got to be like bolder for Christ and stuff because he, he has so many gifts for us. You know, I, growing up, I did have anger issues and stuff and I really worried about that. And, um, you know, when I became a, a, a bold Christian, I, all of a sudden I didn't have that. And it's just amazing. In fact, the only time I've ever lost my cool in front of my kids was we were uh, at the Galleria in Houston and we were shopping. Or actually my wife was shopping and I was outside with the kids. I don't like to shop with my wife and kids because my wife's got that parent leash thing. You know what I'm talking about? The, oh, I don't like them because my wife will get all frustrated and she'll like yank it and it'll like pull my neck. So, <laughs> I know. So, yeah. So, I'm hanging outside and I'm playing around and all of a sudden this lady comes out and she's smoking a cigarette, which I don't like anyway, but she walks right over and she goes... And she throws the cigarette down, and it almost hits Coulter, my seven-year-old. And I don't know why. I got so angry. And I, and I guess she saw it. She goes, you got a problem? And I go, well, you littered, and you almost hit my kid with a lit cigarette. And I was feeling anger well enough that I hadn't felt in a long time. And then she just pushed my butt, and she was like, well, I guess that's your problem now, isn't it? And I was like, yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> but it won't be for long, because <laughs> you'll be dead soon. <laughs> and I totally shouldn't have done that, but to be honest, I kind of like to make fun of smokers, because... Uh, because they can't catch me. <laughs> they can't. They run like 30 feet and then they pass out. <laughs> then you go back and take their wallet. So, <laughs> if you're a Christian, pray for forgiveness. So anyway, <laughs> but it is because you don't want to have anger. You don't want to have anger raising kids. And I, that's another great thing about being able to lay things down at the foot of the cross. And, um, you know, and that's why I think, it, I think Christians... Uh, discipline their kids a little different than uh, non-Christians. And I think that's good because I think a lot of people, um, you know, have anger issues and can't deal with it and shouldn't spank their kids, you know. And we didn't know if we were going to spank our kids, but we got the James Dobson Strong-Willed Child book. And uh, that helped us a lot because it was uh, thick enough that when we spanked them, (laughs) it got their attention. Are you guys for spanking? Are you guys for somebody? Whoa. (laughs) You're ready to spank somebody now. (laughs) Some people aren't. Some Christians aren't. I had a lady come up to me one time. She goes, you're advocating child abuse. You should never spank your child. And I was like, well, have you read Proverbs where they talk about it? And she goes, that was different. That was the Old Testament. They didn't have time out back then. And I was like, what? I was like, yeah, they did. What was the lion's den, huh? There were times I deserved it, man. I, one time I was down front, and my dad used to lead singing at a church, and my dad said this. He goes, on this next song, let's all stand to our feet. I don't know why I said this, but I stood up, and I was like, yeah, everybody, stand to your feet. Good thing you said that. We might have stood to our livers. <laughs> yeah. We never sang that song. My dad just shut the book. He walked right down. It took me right outside and spanked me. And guys, it was so embarrassing because it was right in front of my wife, and uh, (laughs) even when I was a kid, man, I remember, because I used to get in trouble at church a lot, too, and not because I, weird things, first of all, I'm deaf in this ear, I should tell you that, too, because I want to hang out with you guys afterwards um, in the lobby if you you have time, but I'm deaf in this ear, so if you're standing on this side and you're talking to me and I ignore you, no offense, it's because I'm deaf, and, uh, you know, if you're on this side and I'm ignoring you, uh, (laughs) you're annoying. Uh, (laughs) I'm just saying, so, some about James looking in the mirror, I don't know. Anyway, so... But yeah, so I'm deaf in this ear, and that used to backfire in church, because I remember one time the preacher was up there praying, and I was sitting in the church, and I started squishing my eyes, like rubbing my eyes, not realizing that what I could hear, everybody else could hear. So I'm just sitting there, and I'm going, and my dad was like, Bob, shh. And I looked up, and I was like, what? And he goes, you're not supposed to be doing that. And I was like, well, you're not supposed to have your head up, you know, <laughs> put your head down. And so he was like all mad and everything. And I was like, oh, great. I got to really watch myself. And he finished praying. And I, and that's so why I was sitting there. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to be good. And I'll never forget. I mean, this is probably, I don't know, probably the, one of the worst spankings I ever got. And I totally deserved it. But I was sitting there and I was sitting next to my brother. This is the part nobody believes, but a fly landed on his head. Okay. <laughs> And you're not supposed to talk in church. My dad had just told me that. So I had a songbook in my lap. And uh, I was like, whoa, he kind of looks weird. I should take care of my little brother. 
how do I get that fly off his head? <laughs> Boom! You know, right? In my defense, the fly was gone. <laughs> But so was I. <laughs> my dad picked me up, carried me like a football down the aisle. And all I knew was I was in a place of God. So I just started shouting out scriptures. I was like, get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me. <laughs> my dad was like, don't worry. I'll be behind you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was halfway out and he was like squeezing me and I knew it was going to be bad. And so I grabbed one of the pews and the only thing I could think of was I just started going, somebody deliver me from this evil, deliver me, please. <laughs> but my dad's a big Bible reader too. So he was like, everybody stay calm. I'm going to lay hands on the boy. <laughs> so... <laughs> I remember one of the worst spankings I ever got was uh, we grew up in a small town and so I asked my parents to take us into a big town uh, to do something fun and so my parents took us into the, um, the uh, kitty casino place the, where kids gamble, um, Chuck E. Cheese, Chuck E. Cheese. You, gotta, uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. Hey kids, let's work on your cholesterol and your gambling habit. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I don't know how the church missed that that is not a kiddie casino. I mean, you got to go through a turnstile. There's no clocks on the wall. The first couple of tokens are free. Come on. <laughs> so my parents had dropped me off. And uh, I'll never forget, man, uh, I'd, I'd done really well uh, at the skee-ball table that night. I'd left 200 tickets up. And... <laughs> I just did that joke to see who gambles. <laughs> and... Uh... <clears throat> Yo, 11. <laughs> so I, um, I, I did. I won 200 tickets. And so whenever I cashed out, I got one of those rubber sticky hand things that you can sling out. I love those things. So anyway, I got back in the car and uh, my parents picked us back up. And you, I'll talk a little bit about my dad real quick. My dad also would say things that um, just whatever popped in his brain. I, here's, a, here's a good one. Uh, I remember the first time I saw a kid on a milk carton. I didn't realize that it meant he was lost. I thought he just got his picture on a milk carton. And I was like... I want my picture on a milk carton. <laughs> my dad was like, so do I. Because <laughs> I was, people always ask me, you know, is, it, is, is your stand-up real? And it really is from true stories and stuff. I was very slow growing up. And uh, so I, that's why I'm, I love to read is because I had to educate myself. Because I was one of those guys that just couldn't think very, I wasn't even allowed to answer the phone because... You're, as a kid, you're not supposed to act like nobody's home in case a burglar calls. I never could do that. I'd be like, hello? Yeah, my parents? Uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're here. They're uh, um, in the... I couldn't think of it. I was like, they're in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> Together. <laughs> oh! Oh! Hi, are you still there? Yeah. Uh, can I change my answer? I just made myself sick. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Or I couldn't come up with anything. One time, I was just, the phone rang and I picked it up, forgetting I wasn't supposed to answer. And I was like, hello? Yeah, my parents, uh, they're uh, here, but they're in the gun room. Yeah, <laughs> they're cleaning all the guns today. Yeah, I don't want to go in because they'll shoot anybody. <laughs> I got to go. I'm training to be a cage fighter. <laughs> all right, I'll tell them you called. <laughs> I love you, Grandma. You know <laughs> horrible stuff. This is a true story. I grew up out on the farm, and so we were always bored, and so I, I asked my dad if he would take us into town, and um, uh, my dad goes, well, if you're bored, why don't you take your brother outside and play Red Rover? <laughs> I was mathematically challenged enough to do it. I am standing across the yard from my brother. <laughs> Red Rover, Red Rover, let, oh, <laughs> Okay, come on over. <laughs> it wasn't even until he ran past my hand that I got it. And then I went in and I was like, Dad? He was in the office. I was like, Dad, there's not enough to play Red Rover. <laughs> you know what he told me? He goes, Bob, it's like tennis. If you don't have enough to play, play against the wall. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know. <laughs> the wall. <laughs> Dude. I know, that wall was good. So, <laughs> I can't remember if I put this on a DVD or not, but um, I just think it's a good story because it's, um, <laughs> it shows what my dad would do just to test to see how weird I was. My dad told me we were too poor to afford a dog. So if a burglar broke in, I was supposed to bark at him. So... <laughs> 
And it happened my freshman year in high school. It was horrible. This guy broke in our house, and I was only a freshman. And I was laying in bed, you know, I was 18, and I was laying in bed. <laughs> and this guy broke in, and he was unplugging the TV, and I was scared to death, but I had a job to do. So <laughs> I threw the covers off, and I just ran into the living room, ran right up to him, and just went. <laughs> And it worked. (laughs) He just froze and then he let me smell his hand. (laughs) Backed out of the living room. It was great. My dad came over and he's all proud of me. He came over and he rubbed my belly. So (laughs) I was just slow. I was really slow. So my dad would pull pranks on me, you know. And it wasn't even that I was trying to be rebellious, you know. Even at school, man, first grade, my teacher said, class, you have to raise your hand to go to the bathroom. I was like, no, you don't. Watch. (laughs) Yeah. So I didn't date much. And... uh, (laughs) This actually happened, and this was not me being rebellious, because I was a Christian at the time, but this is how slow I was. They put signs up at our school my junior year that said, this is a drug-free school zone. And I get that now, but back then, that totally just weirded me out. I was like, this is a drug-free school zone? I asked my teacher, I was like, teacher, is that necessary? I mean, are there schools out there where teachers are like, come on in, kids. (laughs) Everybody grab a bean bag and a lava lamp, and uh, today, we're going to learn how to open Twinkies because I'm starving, man. <laughs> I was horrible at stuff like that, man. <laughs> my, dad would pull, my dad would pull pranks on me and uh, my ears are, were this big when I was born. And so my dad was my school superintendent, so he would totally mess with me there. He'd come over the intercom and be like, Can everybody's attention, please. Bob Smiley, you left your earmuffs in the parking lot. <laughs> please go get them. We can't get the buses out. <laughs> I got him back, though. We probably won't put this on the DVD, but I've always wanted to tell this. But the worst prank I ever pulled on my dad was my senior year. My dad was a superintendent of a very small school, and he used to hand out awards. And one of these awards was perfect attendance. So it was a little small crowd, and every year, perfect attendance, Bob Smiley and everybody else. And I had perfect attendance throughout till my senior year and had perfect attendance in. But then I skipped the very last day as a prank on him because I knew he'd be in front of everybody going, perfect attendance, Bob Smiley. Perfect attendance, hasn't missed a day in his whole life. Bob Smiley, my friend in the back, was like, oh, he's absent. <laughs> so, <laughs> but my dad would do stuff. Do one more, and then I'll get on with my other story. Um, but I, my dad, I went to Abilene Christian University, and my dad, I stayed there for the Christmas break. And uh, wow, Abilene? Uh, yeah, all right, more people in debt. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> You can't put a price on Christian education, but they'll bill you for it. So, I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. What is that? Blue, blue, 42. So, yeah, so I stayed there over Christmas, and my dad pulled a prank on me. He mailed me my Christmas gift where it would get there December 26th, the day after Christmas, but wrote on the outside of the package, don't open till Christmas. So I had to wait all year to open. I know. That poor puppy. Uh, That is actually a joke. I just tell it because it I tell it because it makes me laugh. Anyway, so My dad always pulled pranks on me. So I got in the car, and my dad immediately turned on country music and loudly, and not good country music. He played this mindless, get in the middle of your brain and eat your brain from the inside out kind of country music. You know, songs like lang, 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 lang. You know, right? I am not even kidding. It was a lyric in one of the songs. Or it was songs that we shouldn't be listening to as Christians. Songs like, if I can't be number one in your heart, then number two on you. And I was like, what? (laughs) 
So I'm sitting in the back and I'm like, you know, this is horrible. This is terrible. I wish there was something I could do. I wish I could, hey. And I remembered I had a rubber sticky hand thing. So I thought to myself, I bet you I could sling that between my mom and my dad and hit one of the radio buttons and change the channel. So I prayed about it. <clears throat> you should always pray before you do any kind of mission work. So I didn't even know if it would work, but all of a sudden I was like, like that. Not only did the hand go between my mom and my dad and hit a radio button and hit my button, which was channel number two out of Dallas, Texas, which was 97.1, the Eagle. So it went from lang, 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 to welcome to the jungle. We got, my dad was like, ah! <clears throat> Only in a guy's voice, but he was screaming really loud, okay? <laughs> he was wigging out. He later told me he thought Satan had possessed his radio. You got to realize, I grew up ultra conservative Christian, ultra conservative. In fact, um, very, very conservative. Like we didn't. Uh, in fact, that's been cool about traveling around and seeing different churches and how people worship God. Again, the creativity of God is amazing. Um, you know, like I never seen anybody sing with their hands up till the first tour. We were talking about it during the break, but the first tour I did was with Clay Cross, and I, I did a 15 minute bit, and I started walking up the the aisle, and Clay got up and started singing "I Surrender All," and I remember walking by this lady who was so lost in worship that she was singing with her hands up. Lifting holy hands to God. And I never seen that before when I walked by her. And I just, you know, didn't know what she was doing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I thought she wanted a high five. <laughs> it was horrible. I walked in. I was like, boom, baby. <laughs> she was all like, I surrender. Ah! I later asked her, I was like, are you okay? She goes, I thought God gave me a high five. I was like, ma'am, that would have been the coolest thing in the world. Why did you scream like that then? And she was like, well, I was kind of disappointed at what God looked like. My ultra-conservative parents, whenever they started hearing that, my dad honestly thought Satan had possessed the radio. My conservative Christian parents started doing things I'd never seen them do before. My dad started laying hands on the radio. My mom started talking in tongues, which I could tell she was just faking it, just hoping it would work. Because she was like, ah, bought a Mazda, should have bought a Honda. And I was like... <laughs> I was in the back, Honda, well, you know, all in one accord, I could get that part, but the Mazda? So I'm in the back. All right, we're going to edit that one out, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Teach you to groan at me. So anyway, can't believe you guys booed me on that one. That was awesome. <laughs> made me feel like this was a family reunion. So anyway, <laughs> I have never played quarterback in my life. I don't know why I keep doing that. <laughs> I don't... So yeah, so they were wigging out. My dad finally grabs the steering wheel. I'm like, boom, boom, back in my hand, back in my pocket. My dad's like, ah, ah, and he grabbed the rear view mirror and he goes, oh my goodness, what happened? Which meant I got away with it. Yeah. My brother goes, he did it. Shadrach. So my dad didn't even ask me. He just goes, I don't care what you did. Don't you ever, ever do that again. And I'm guessing probably most of you guys don't know me. So I'm going to be serious for a second. But honestly, from my heart, I promise you that I wasn't planning on doing it again. But <laughs> <laughs> a Billy Ray Cyrus song came on right then. Yeah. I think even God would understand my disobedience at this point. I was like, I got to do it again. So I pulled out the rubber sticky hand thing. I was like, I got to do it again. So all of a sudden, I was like, like that. I didn't even know if it worked twice in a row. All of a sudden, that hand was going straight up between my mom and my dad and heading right back to channel number two. I was like, it's going to happen again. It didn't. Because when the hand got between my mom and my dad, my dad went around a curve really quick. So the hand goes, yeah, boom. <laughs> Caught him across the face. 
Now here's the problem with that. He doesn't know I have that. All he knows is a big gooey hand has now reached up and grabbed him. Which really scares him because he already thought Satan was in his radio. So he starts screaming, a demon's got me, a demon's got me, ah! So he grabs the hand, he throws it up against the windshield. It splats up huge. He's like, oh my gosh. So he rolls down the window, throws it out. I scare him even more by going, my hand! I'm thinking it's as worse as it's ever going to get. And my brother turns around and goes, that is so cool. That landed right in the center of that cop's windshield. <laughs> so that's what kind of kid I was. And from there, now I'm a father of three boys and I'm always worried about it. And then I had this great moment happen a, a year ago where I took my kids to a playground uh, where I live. And I don't know what your playgrounds are like now, but it's, I was so disappointed because everything's now small and safe. And, you know, they didn't have like the, did you guys have the 30 foot metal slide when you were a kid? Yeah. yeah. That was awesome. I love that thing. You had 30 minutes of recess, 28 minutes of it was climbing up this slide. You had two choices. You could slide down it or you could heat a TV dinner up on it. Yeah. None of that. They didn't have any of that. I was so bummed. I mean, it was almost like, you know, like the PC people had moved in. The liberals had moved in and made everything safe. And I guess 30 years from now, a playground's going to be a big open field with a beanbag tossed in the middle. <laughs> Have fun. Be safe. Vote for Hillary. You know, right? I know. And I heard a couple of oohs and boos. I don't know if that was for me or for Hillary, but just know I'm not a political comic and I'm not making a statement on this. In fact, um, you know, if you're a uh, Republican, great. If you're a Democrat, uh, you know, hate the sin, not the sinner. So, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> So anyway, so I'm walking around and I've got my two oldest boys with me and I'm like all bummed because the playgrounds didn't look like anything when I was a kid. But right behind the little soft, safe, plasticky stuff, almost like they just left them out, was my favorite thing when I was a kid was the animal on the coil. I love those. There were three of them and there were three of us. So I immediately pushed my kids down because I wanted the seahorse. So... <laughs> I am not proud of that. I'm just telling you the story. I pushed them down. The seahorse had the grips up top. The dolphin and the whale grips down below. So I knew it was better. for. I jumped on it, forgetting two things. One, I'm an adult. I probably should have taken care of my kids first. Two, I'm an adult. I weigh like 120 more pounds than the last time I was on one of those. I got on it. And I was like, woohoo, ha-ha, oh no, boo! I had a huge dilemma because the seahorse was still between my legs. I know. The coil was out straight and it was vibrating. So I knew if I let go of this thing, it was going to flip me across the playground, which made me nervous because we might want to have four. So I am holding on it. I'm going to stand up. I am so sorry about the view. Sorry. You should get here early next time. So So I'm down there, I'm holding on to the seahorse, and this is when I realized my kids don't take me as a father, they take me more as a playmate. I'm down there holding on, I was like, Coulter, you gotta come over and help your dad, I can't let go of this, you gotta help me. He goes, Daddy, you're so funny. <laughs> and he starts pouring sand on my head. And it's that playground sand, it's that nasty, it's that, that, hee, kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs> so I get home. And I'm praying with my wife. We have an awesome prayer life. And I'm just praying with her. And I'm like talking about being a good father and all this stuff. And at the end of the prayer, she goes, why are you so worried about being a good father? And I was like, I want my kids to have a great father. And she looked at me. She goes, your kids have a perfect father. And I was like, oh, baby. <laughs> she goes, no, you idiot. I'm talking about God up above. <laughs> it's like, yeah, me too. <laughs> she said this to me, guys. And it just, it was amazing. She looked at me, she goes, you got to realize your, your kids have a perfect father up above that has a path and a plan for them that will never forsake them, never leave them, never put them in a situation that they can't handle. You have, you have kids that have a perfect father up above that loves them unconditionally. So just be the goofy father God made you to be and keep pointing them upward. Amen. And I just love that message. Isn't that an awesome message that my wife delivered? <laughs> yeah. 
And so real quick, I mean, I'm going to close with two uh, quick stories, but I just wanted to say, man, I know there's a lot of people out there that don't have a father, or maybe you have a father, and he doesn't even deserve the term father. And I just want to encourage you guys to quit living for that earthly father and start living for our perfect father up above because he loves his children and he wants to see his children do well. And the only way to do that is to walk in his path. And so I just encourage you guys to do that. And my wife just, she's so amazing. And somebody, during the break, we took questions and I uh, actually asked, uh, somebody asked me about how I met my wife. I met her at a Christian college, which is great. If you're single, go to a Christian college because you can, it's easy to pick up girls because you can use Christian pickup lines like, you know, excuse me, I believe your rib belongs to me. You know, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, seriously, don't write it down. Don't write it down. <laughs> She's so awesome. I, we actually met at a park at the college, and it was love at first sight, which I didn't believe in at first, but she was walking across the field, and she just stopped and looked right at me, and I couldn't believe it, because I, you know, thought I was hidden by the bushes, but uh, <laughs> evidently love knows no boundaries, because she just looked right into my binoculars, and... Um, <laughs> And I do, I get so nervous when I talk to people. In fact, you know, I remember one of the worst things, I, I tried to ask this girl to dance one time at a, at a dance, and I went up to her, and I was like, hi, would you dance with me? And she goes, why would I dance with you? And the only thing I could think of was, my mom says I'm cute, right? <laughs> she goes, why don't you dance with her then, huh? You know, I know, isn't that mean? I know, because my mom had just said no, so... <clears throat> Anyway, but I knew I had to talk to her, so I walked up. She was beautiful, and I'd, I'd heard a little bit about her at, at the college. I knew she was a good Christian girl, and I walked up to her, and I wanted to, to say, you know, hi, you look nice, but I got all nervous, and I was like, nice, you look high. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got married. It was awesome. It was great. I proposed to her. I asked, I asked my in-laws. That was such an emotional moment. I was nervous to ask my in-laws, but my in-laws were so excited. And uh, it was an emotional moment because when I told uh, my mother-in-law that I wanted to marry her daughter, um, man, she was so moved. She actually started crying uh, out loud. And uh, I could tell she didn't want to cry during the, that you know, moment because she was just like, ah! she just put her head down. She was like, no, no, no. <laughs> I was so moved. I was like, hey, hey, we're all emotional. You go ahead and let it out. Mom, <laughs> but you got to have a good family, and that's what I just, I, I, you got to have family to raise kids, and um, you know, it's great, and you know, I always try, when I do my shows, I try to talk about my grandmother, because she was such a coolest uh, Christian I ever knew, and, and plus, I, I think they're a blessing from God, if you have your grandparents, I, I do shows for kids all the time, and I encourage the kids to talk to their grandparents, and it's amazing, their argument, the reason why they don't want to talk to their grandparents is they say, oh, they're getting old, their mind is wandering, they say weird stuff, and I'm like, dude, that's the best time to talk to them, right? Because <laughs> talking to them is kind of like channel surfing. You never know what's on, right? <laughs> I love it, man. One, one time I, 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 I was talking to my grandmother. I was like, what was your favorite vacation? Without missing a beat, she goes, the cruise. I go, you didn't go on a cruise. She goes, I did too. I went on a three-hour tour. And I was like... Oh. <laughs> I think I heard about it. You uh, were stranded on an island with six other castaways, right? She goes, yep. And I was like, yeah, you were there for a long time, weren't you? She goes, nope, they voted me off the first day. And I was like... <laughs> My favorite story about her, she bought a motorhome. I, I, I moved in with her when she turned 92. I wanted to help her out. And she bought a motorhome because she wanted me to drive her to California. We were driving to California. And a police officer pulled behind us. And I was driving. It was the first time I ever saw her worry. And she was like, we're going to get a ticket. We're going to get a ticket. And I was like, no, calm down. We're not going to get a ticket. And she's like, yeah, we are. I've got a porch light out. And I'm like, what? <laughs> we pulled over to the side of the, on this big motorhome, this big Winnebago. We pulled over to the side of the road. And the cop comes up, knocks on the side of the door. My grandma's like, shh. Pretend we're not home. <laughs> you got to hang out with your grandparents. There's so much to be learned by them. And, um, and plus weird stuff that they do. Maybe it's not so weird if you'll take the time to get to know them. And um, I, I'll share this. And again, I don't want to ever offend anybody, but I think this is a great example uh, because my uh, grandmother lived in Austin and I used to, um, I, I, I lived with her for a while because she was having some health problems. And I noticed that she would wrap her money in a pair of her underwear and keep it in her purse. So I know, and I was like you guys, I was like, oh, you know, and I, I thought it was crazy old grandmother just wrapping her money in her underwear, you know, right? <laughs> 
I asked her, I finally was like, why do you do that? And I think if we'll take time to find out, maybe it's not so weird. My grandmother told me we walk around Austin all the time and people come by and steal purses from old ladies, you know, which is not good. But, you know, where there's Satan in the world, there's going to be evil. And so I got to prepare for it. So I thought even though I lost my purse, I thought I'd figure out a way to keep them from getting my money. So I wrap in a pair of my underwear. So when they're going through it, they go, oh, old lady underwear. And they throw it away. And then they don't get my money. (laughs) I know. I mean, it wasn't pure genius idea because it, there was some flaws to it. I mean, there were times where, you know, she had to pay the guy at line in Walmart and she'd be standing there unrolling her underwear. Just going, How much do I owe you? You know, and I'd just be standing there praying she didn't go, hang on, I got change. You know, right? She changed my life with this, man. This is such a powerful message. And I'm going to tell this in one more thing. I appreciate you guys hanging with me uh, um, doing this thing, man. It's it's been so great for you guys to come out. But uh, she told me, like early on, she said, you got to pray. If you're going to be a Christian, you got to pray. You cannot pray like it's just something to do at the end of the night where you fall asleep. And if you do that, I'm not bagging you. I used to do that. In fact, I actually think it shows God's grace of how much he loves us. Because honestly, if I was God up there and you, I created you and you fell asleep, well, I'd be up there going, did he just fall asleep? <laughs> I created him and he wants me to give him an A on the math test and he can't even stay awake long. And I'm taking him off my MySpace, you know, right? <laughs> I would. I'd be mad. I would be vengeful. God's not. He loves his children. I would be like, I think a little Charlie horse would wake him up right now, you know? I would. I'd come through the ceiling, man. I'd be like, Rah! Tonight, I'm going to let the bed bugs bite. Rah! But he doesn't. He loves us. But my grandmother said, pray fervently. And she actually challenged me to pick things and pray for a whole week to see what God did. And that's when I started seeing God showing up in my life when I was talking to him every day, constantly, and praying for specific stuff. And then this one thing happened. This one week, I was kind of out of things to pray about. And so I decided, (laughs) this is so dumb. I was praying for a whole week for superhero powers. And I know, I know. And I didn't even leave it up to God what power to give, because I know he has a sense of humor. And I thought he'd give me something weird just for praying for something like that. You know, I'd be like, you know, coffee would shoot out of my eye or something like that, you know, like, dun, 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 regular decaf, you know. <laughs> Kleenex would come out of my navel, you know, something weird that you couldn't really use, you know. Dun, 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 I'm funeral boy. Who's crying? Who's crying? Who's crying? <laughs> I prayed for Darth Vader powers, okay? Bear with me on this. Star Wars, or actually it was Return of the Jedi, or I can't remember what it was, but some, one of the Star Wars was out, and I, I thought it'd be so cool to have Darth Vader powers, because one, I thought it'd be cool to be a remote control, stuff like that. Two, I thought later on in life it would be cool to be able to do that little chokehold move that he did, because then I could ask girls out and they couldn't say no. I'd be like, you want to go out with me? No? <laughs> Welcome to the dark side, <laughs> Which, by the way, this is off the subject, but I, I shared that with uh, my church one time, kind of a testimony, and my oldest son came up to me afterwards, and he's like, that was a good story, but man, you know how bad Star Wars would be if you were the voice of Darth Vader? And I was like, <laughs> and I know I was going to argue with him, but I thought, man, he would really have messed it up, you know, if he was like, Luke, I'm your father. <laughs> no. You're my mother, you know, right? <laughs> So I was praying for Darth Vader powers every week. Every week my grandmother would call or come over and say, are you praying? Every week, just check up on me. Are you praying? Except for the week I prayed for superhero powers. She didn't ask me if I was praying. She asked me what I was praying about. Yeah. Are you praying? Yeah. Are you praying? Yeah. What are you praying about? Yeah. (laughs) What? She goes, what are you praying about? And I didn't want to tell her. Finally, I was like, "Uh, (laughs) joy. (laughs) She goes, no, tell me. I was so embarrassed, but I was like, I'm praying to have a... Superhero powers. I'll never forget this guy. She looked me right in the eye and she goes, Bob, you have a superhero power. You are a superhero. And I was like, Grandmother, (laughs) just because I wear tights and a cape. (laughs) It's not making me a superhero. Just makes me an interesting sophomore, you know. (laughs) She looked me in the eye. She said, you got to realize that when you pray to God, 
You pray to a God who can influence the tide, that can heal people of diseases, that can bring families back together. You pray to a God who listens to his children, and this God can perform miracles. You have a superhero power, and that you can pray to a God that performs miracles. Never forget that. And I was so moved by that, but here's why I wanted to to be telling everybody in the world about it. Because as I've been doing stand-up comedy, especially in the last five years, I think the outside world is all of a sudden looking at us Christians and not only realizing that we have this superhero power, but that it works abundantly. Because tell me, why else would they try to keep it out of our schools, out of our courthouses? Why would they fight so hard to take prayer away from us unless they knew that it worked and it was a power they don't have? We are superheroes and we've got to go out there in the world and we've got to fight a war that we've already won. And I'm going to close with this last quick story because it kind of sums it all up. But uh, Thanks. Thanks, guys, man. You've been so good to me. And um, anyway, so when you're hugely famous like me, um, <coughs> I am hugely famous. And uh, the most annoying part about it is uh, I'm always having to tell everyone. Um, it is. Even my wife, like, she tries to deny it. I'm like, you know, one day I was noticed by eight different people in one day. And she was like, yeah, we're at a family reunion. So, <coughs> but when you're, <laughs> I actually opened for Switchfoot one summer in front of 60,000 people. Yeah. Think about that, honestly. 60,000 people laughing. (laughs) That would have been cool, man. (laughs) Anyway, when you're famous like me, when you're famous like me, you get to join all these exclusive clubs. And so uh, in January, I joined the YMCA. And uh, it's awesome. And my dad actually works out, which is funny because my dad weighs 280 pounds and he's 5'7". So he's like this big guy. I could actually stand next to him. We look like the number 10. Okay. And he does, he works out with me. He's always like, uh, I do 30 minutes a day on the treadmill. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't turn it on, right? And he doesn't, he just stands there. He's like, if I turned it on, I'd drop my jelly donut. <laughs> but he still brags about it. He's like, that was a good workout. Ugh, I'm a stud muffin. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're a muffin. <laughs> but the first time I went there, I actually... Um, I'd never been before, and so I, I, was, I was swimming and I, uh, out front, and I was getting a lot of laps in, and uh, I was finding, finding a lot of coins. And um, <laughs> I had one of these trainers, one of those psycho trainers. You're supposed to go through a training session. She, saw, uh, she, had, she came out and, uh, and uh, yelled at me. She was like, get out of our fountain. And uh, <laughs> I didn't know. And so she took me inside, and she was like, you're supposed to have a training lesson. And I was like, I just want to swim. And she goes, no, you've got to have a training lesson. And, I was like, and she pulled out a clipboard, and she goes, what are your goals? And I was like, uh, I want to have a body so hot that my wife can't keep her hands off me. And she was like, oh, we better get started. <laughs> so she took me over, and this, I'll, I'll make this quick, but I went over, and I, uh, they took me to the bench press, <clears throat> which should be called the chest smash, because she, she was like, what's your max? And I was like, well, how much is that? And she goes, that's the bar. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I can do a little under that. <laughs> But she put 10 pounds on each side, and I, and I laid down, <clears throat> so, excuse me, I laid down, and all of a sudden, I just, I was like, and it went, boom, like that, and I was like, ah! And she immediately started looking underneath the bench, and I was like, I don't think it went through, I don't think it went through. She goes, it's not that, I'm looking for the little school girl that yelled, where is that little girl? So I got up, and I was like, I just want to swim. So they finally let me to go swimming. And I, I, I got in the they, inside pool. They had a big, huge um, Olympic-sized pool. And I got in, and in the lane next to me was the oldest guy I'd ever seen in my entire life, okay? He was like way past Walmart greeter old, okay? He was, yeah. He was like, check for a pulse and hope you don't have to give mouth to mouth old. So, well, I love elderly people and the older the better. So I got in and I was like, oh man, I got to talk to this dude. And so I was like, hey, good morning. And I guess he couldn't see very well because he was like, good morning, ma'am. And uh, <laughs> it's okay. It's my cross to bear. It's my thorn in the flesh. And, uh, but I talked to him for a little bit and he was super cool. And, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to swim. And I'll never forget. He looked at me and he goes, hey, I'm going to ask you a question. I was like, okay. And he goes, do you think I'm old? I was like, what? Because I was taken back by it. Plus, I kind of didn't hear him because I was worried because my body was starting to burn from all the Ben Gay in the pool. And so I was like, what? And he goes, do you think I'm old? And I was like, well, that or you've been in the water way too long, man. (laughs) 
he looked at me. He said, I'm 96 years old and I bet I can outswim you. Yeah. Well, so part of being a good Christian is knowing when to pull yourself out of a situation. And I didn't want to swim him because I knew pride would kick in and I would swim to beat him. And I didn't want to do that. And so I was like, no, that's okay, sir. I'm, I'm just going to do some lanes. You'd probably win anyway. And he's like, okay, I figured as much. And I'm just going to ask you one more question. And I just ask, just please don't lie to me because you're not going to hurt my feelings. And I was like, okay. And he goes, is the reason why you won't swim against me because you're a little sissy chicken? And I was like, what? <laughs> I know, like this guy was on some major Geritol buzz or something. I was like, what? He goes, I didn't know if you wouldn't swim against me because you're a little Nancy boy. <laughs> I was like, it is on, Grandpa. It is on. So now I'm going to beat him. So I'm over there. I'm stretching. I'm warming up. He's getting ready, too. He's like slamming cans of Ensure. So... <laughs> We, we get up against the wall. I'm like, name your terms. He's like down and back, which between you and me, I'm thinking, well, this is perfect because now I'm going to beat him definitely because he's going to get down there and forget he's racing. So <laughs> I was like, let's go. And he goes, all right, I'll count to three. And he did, but he counted like old people counted. He counted in Roman numerals, which I'd never heard out loud before. He was like, I, I, I. I was like, what is that? Is that three? Or... Do you have a stuttering problem or... Are you part dolphin? What is going on here? <laughs> he took off. I'm not proud of this. I swam to beat him. And I was swimming like crazy because I was mad because he smarted off to me. And I was swimming. I was like, I'm going to beat this guy. I'm going to teach him a lesson. He'll smart off to me. He'll call me a little Nancy boy. I'm going to swim. It. I'm going to beat this old guy. I'm going to beat this old elderly guy. And then all of a sudden, that still small voice started going off in my head going, What are you doing? Travel all over the world telling people about Jesus Christ and how we need to be bold and how we need to be uncaged for him and, and not be held down. We need to start living like Christ would live and make him proud because nothing else matters. And as I was swimming, I thought, man, I can't believe I'm letting pride get in my way. And all of a sudden, I know it's kind of weird because you see it everywhere, but I honestly thought to myself, WWJD, I thought to myself, what would Jesus do? And guys, I just, I was convicted. I knew there was only one answer. That Jesus would still beat him, but just not very much. So, <laughs> Christ wants us to be humble. So, I am swimming and I pull back a little bit and I get and I do my little turnaround and he gets over there and he does his turnaround, I guess. I look up and I'm now about 10 yards in front of him. So I'm like, okay, that's good pacing. I'm just going to beat him by 10 yards and I'm swimming a little fast. I look up, he's catching up. I'm swimming a little faster. Old Man River is now chugging up to me. My pride starts kicking in. I'm like, oh my goodness. He's going to, and I swim a little faster and a little faster and a little faster. I look up, he's neck and neck with me. He looks over and he goes, ha ha ha. And Father Time shoots past me like a bullet in the water. Now my pride kicks in. I'm like, ah! I'm a Nancy boy. <laughs> he killed me. He killed me in the race. I got up on the side. I'll never forget this. I, I looked over. He was just treading water, just kind of looking at me, just grinning. And I had to give him props. I was like, sir, you're an awesome swimmer. And he tried to be all humble. He goes, ah, well, you know, I swim every day. I'm like, I don't care. You're 96 years old, and you killed me in that race. You've got to take credit for that. And he goes, well, I appreciate it, and I'll probably take a little credit. But honestly, I think most of the credit has to go to these. And he reached under the water and took off swimming flippers off his feet. Yeah, big flippers. I was like, you, <laughs> old man. <laughs> and I was so proud of him. And then he said something I thought was super funny. He goes, well, I got to go. I'm late for work. I was like, what? You work? What do you do? And he goes, well, I'm a youth leader for an old folks home. And I was like, what? <laughs> You're a youth leader for an old folks? What do you guys do? And he goes, well, tonight we're having a lock-in at the country buffet. And I was like, oh, <laughs> how does that work? And he goes, we're old. We all just fall asleep after dinner. I was like, okay. <laughs> Guys, I love that story. First of all, it just happened, and I love telling it, but I also love it because I did exactly what the outside world does to us Christians. When I walked into that pool, all I looked at was the surface level. I had no idea what kind of power this guy had underneath, and we are the exact same way. The outside world just looks at us Christians, and this is all they see, but they have no idea what kind of power we have underneath. We have the power of Jesus Christ. We have the ultimate answer to life, don't we?
And so my challenge to you guys, everybody watching the DVD, all of you guys, my challenge to you is to be uncaged with this power and let this power seep out into the world. And we got to start sharing this boldly through prayer and through everything else that God puts in our way because he has given us so much. He's given us love, the ultimate sacrifice. He's given us everything we need to win the race. And that is love and that is power, period, end of story and end of my show. I appreciate you guys coming out. Thank you guys so much.